Freeman's Bay, because it was so close to the city um, and because all the industry was around, around the waterfront, uh, people came out of the city. As the city grew, people were pushed out into the bay to live. And it was all the workers, and there was obviously no town planning or anything, so they just knocked up little cottages everywhere. Um, and if you look at old photographs, you'll see the streets are, are, are narrow, the streets, they were mud tracks, etc. And as more and more people came, it grew and it grew, and every little gap got filled up by somebody coming to live there. And what also happened, unfortunately, as houses fell down and weren't replaced, often industrial, little weeny factories would come in, so pollution was added to the place, um, and it just got dirtier and dirtier. By the post-Second World War, the city council was really concerned about the slum, and I think there was a general movement in New Zealand at that time about the evil of slums and how they affected people so badly and how they bred uh, delinquents, etc. So the, a movement came to get rid of slums and rebuild, and Freeman's Bay was one of the first to be considered to be rebuilt. Uh, in 19, about 1947, somebody had done a study of the schools of Freeman's Bay about the kids, and the, the survey was called The Dirty Children of Freeman's Bay. And they surveyed the houses and found that there were maybe 20 people living in a two-bedroom house. And that also uh, was a push to get the area cleared. So the council dreamt up a grand scheme and they were going to put a bulldozer through about 300 acres of land and completely rebuild with nice new apartments. They put the bulldozers through, they moved people into what they called transit housing that had been set up during Second World War. And the idea had been to move them back into the brand new flats that were going to be bright and shiny, correctly positioned for sun. So the first ones were built up at the top of Howe Street. And they moved people, a few people moved back in, but then the council quickly recognised they couldn't afford to move people in because the people couldn't afford to pay the rents that the council needed to get. So the whole plan fell apart quite quickly. Landlords then refused to do the work because when the demolition order came in in about 1951, the values of the properties were from that date, even though they weren't destroyed often or taken for demolition for another 10 or maybe 15 years. So the landlords were not going to spend money on doing up properties which they weren't going to get the money back from because the, the, the sum had been set at the beginning. So, of course, everything just fell into repair, more a uh, disrepair, increasingly fell into disrepair and slum. So, in fact, this policy of clearance created more slum, if you can see what I'm trying to say. When we talk to people about Freeman's Bay now, people think of Freeman's Bay between the motorway and Ponsonby, but, in fact, Freeman's Bay was considered to go right up to about Nelson Street uh, so what the motorway did was, first of all, it completely cut the area in half. And I think the other side, Drake Street, etc., is now considered very much part of the city and no longer Freeman's Bay. The other thing, and then they got more removals of people at that time because the motorway was going over various houses. And stupidly, they, this council had built all these flats in How the top of Howe Street and they had to knock half of them down again to put the motorway over.